Well, that's a very good question. Uh, let me make a note. I don't know if, um, and I certainly don't pretend to be the soothsayer of all this, but um, allow me to follow up with that question. And I'll find out if those things are archivable. It's a great question. I just don't know. Um, my sense is, is that it's not, but I'm sure somebody's developed an application that can do that, or it's, it's coming. So let me make a note. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, that's Twitter vision. If you're curious about that, let me jump back out to full screen here. So, what you can do is one of the, the cool things, and this is kind of getting back to, to a question earlier: is can you filter? I'll show you another application in just a minute where you can do a better job of filtering tweets using what's called geotagging. And geotagging is location tagging. So your Twitter profile can be specific to Emporia or specific to wherever you happen to be at that moment. And then whenever you tweet, it'll post to that location where you happen to be. So let me jump ahead just a bit here and show you this. Okay, bear with me, I'm gonna, we're gonna get some hands on just a bit. This is what I just found yesterday, which is pretty interesting, called Fresh Logic. And let me jump out to their website real quick here. And this works very similar to what you just saw with Twitter Vision. They do a mashup though, instead of using the Google Maps, they do a mashup instead with the Microsoft Virtual World, or Virtual Atlas. And so what's really interesting about this one, I think, is that you can actually, the tweets will actually drill down to the house where the tweet is coming from. Where the tweet is coming from. It's a tweet. So as this, as this moves here, I may have to sign myself in. I'm hoping I can actually show you this in real time once I get in here. Hold on. This is pretty cool. Okay, let me see if we can zoom back out here real quick. And so any, that there was, happened to be somebody tweeting there from that place fairly recently, I guess. So whenever there's a tweet, it's gonna actually move to that location, so he says. Let's see if we can get this to work. It's given me a great view of the of the area, but what it should be doing is it actually should be um, it should actually be showing. Like I said, I just saw this yesterday. And I thought I would throw it in here so you can see what it looks like. What it does though is it actually shows me clear down to the neighborhood, down to the house, where that tweet is coming from. Let me pull back out here a bit. I may let this cook for a while, and we may come back to that and see how that's working. Because it was working fine yesterday. It was kind of interesting, because you, you can either leave it way out, or you can zoom way in. It will actually move itself around automatically. I'm doing, obviously, something wrong. But this is called Fresh Logic Studios. And trust me, it does work once the operator knows what he's doing. This is an interesting one called Historical Tweets. I mean, leave that one cooking for a minute here. And this is sort of an interesting thing if you teach history. What it, the, the purpose of historical tweets is that you can actually take on the persona of some historical figure and actually tweet as if you were that person in history. So it's like, what would, you know, these people be doing or, you know, well, well I'm trying to, pluck out a historical figure real quickly in my mind here, but what would Churchill be tweeting about right now? <laughs> so you can actually take on the persona of these people. So where history teachers are finding applications is they're trying to put their students into this environment where they actually take on that personality. I, I mean, I'm scratching the surface on what's possible. Let me see if this guy's been more cooperative here.
this one of those where you click the spot on the map, or does it automatically come up? This press press logic. Yeah, what you're looking at right now. Well, you know, it, it, yesterday it was doing it automatically, and I just have to. I'll have to just mess with it. Once once this is over, they all have it all figured out. <laughs> so, but anyway. So that's another application of this. Let me kind of jump ahead here a bit. I know we're kind of low on time. Uh, this is an application that I use that I really, really like called TweetDeck. Okay, let me show you what this looks like here. And this is a free add-on utility. Let me pull this up so you can see it. Now that little noise that you just heard, you may have, have not been able to hear that real, real well. But let me kind of scooch this over to the to the left and to the right. What what this does, what this tweak deck does, is it allows me to pull feeds from Facebook, from Twitter, and from other applications all into one interface. So I can respond to my tweets or respond to Facebook directly from one application. I don't have to jump into Facebook or go back to Twitter. I can do it all from tweak deck. Now, what's also, so these, these are, this is coming from Facebook right here. All these are my Facebook feeds. These are my Twitter feeds that are coming in. These are my replies. And my screen, unfortunately, is kind of scratching things around here a bit. But what you can't see over to the right, a little further here, is my scroll bars are being kind of funky. Let me see if I can move things around a bit here. Is over to the right, you can create groupings. So this is a group that I created called education. So any tweet that comes in that's what I consider to be educationally oriented, the topic education, will automatically filter into this area. So I can screen everything else out, and I just have education. Or I can screen everything else out that's not related to technology. That's the other one over here. So there's all my tweets regarding technology. Let me scooch back over just a bit. So these guys, like this is Guy Kawasaki. If you don't know him, he's a sort of a Mac guru. And this interesting guy from Great Britain, another guy from Atlanta. So they always have cool sites and stuff that they're showing. So I sort of filter things out of there. So what you can do for students is you can create groupings of students through TweetDeck. And then you can screen your students, and you can actually have them by class. So if the student tweets, that student's tweet comes right in this section, along with the other students. And nobody else's tweets get in there. So it's an interesting way to sort of filter stuff around. Um, what you're also seeing here, too, are these very abbreviated URLs. Tiny, you probably heard of tiny URL. Bitly is another one. Sniper is another one. You take these, these enormous URLs and you trim them down using one of those applications because they won't fit in 140 characters. Right, so that's how you send URLs out. Okay, tweet deck. Moving along quickly. Uh, you can also, I will show you this, but you can also use Twitter to connect to YouTube or to Vimeo or to Vidler or any of the other video service uh, utilities that are out there. So if you want to show a video to the class or the students want to share a video, they don't actually post the video through Twitter. They just post the link to YouTube and then snipe it down, right? Which makes the URL short. Okay, questions? We can use this in public speaking and they can Twitter it to themselves. Is that what you just said? Yes, sure. There's also this application, I've had a chance to try, it's called Twittio, which does the same thing, Twittio. Which does the same thing. There's all so 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 there's all 
So. This all. 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 So.